Welcome, in front of me is a Motorola Edge 40 Pro and today I'll go over unboxing along with a quick overview of this device. So, let's just jump straight into it. This is Motorola's uh, premium device for this generation. So it's basically one of the most expensive devices that they have to offer. So let's see what they're offering in a, uh, what is it? $1,200? Yep, about 1200 bucks. Anyway, we got our device right here. Yeah, so there we go. That's basically all we have in, Hello, in the box, uh, which is still more than how we usually get with other devices like Samsung. Now, uh, for most, this little brick right here, that's a freaking great charging brick, 125 watts. It's just mm, so good. We got a Type-C to Type-C charging cable and a plastic hard case. So you can see, this is like a hard case. I'm putting it straight on. And so it looks like. Now, I personally like the design of the device. It's the first time I'm looking at it, completely honestly. So I haven't seen before this device before, but the back is pretty nice. It's a matte finish on a glass uh, with just this shiny Motorola logo and a camera bump right here. Uh, we have a little bit of a curve as well. And obviously the front display is also curved as you can probably see this with very minimal bezels all around. So uh, quickly going into the uh, screen specs, while well, I'm kind of going through the setup, we are looking at a 6.67 inch display. This is a 1080p display, OLED, 1 billion colors, and 165 uh, hertz refresh rate. So that is a insanely fast display right here. We also have HDR10+, and Dolby Vision, uh, 90, uh, 90 and a half percent screen to body rate or not screen to uh, yeah screen to body ratio so with the bezels uh, they're basically taking like nine and a half percent and we in terms of the pixel density right here we're looking at a 900 which is 900 uh 394 now we go so in terms of the pixel density it is uh the typical kind of pixel density of most of the other devices. It's a 1080p display. Uh, it's, I would consider like a sweet spot. Going over this is just redundant uh, and having it at this resolution is giving a super sharp image and uh, nothing should be pixelated. Going over it won't really give you any benefit apart from lower battery life. So there we go. Now, um, as you can see, the display looks pretty nice. I'll make it a little bit brighter so it stands out a little bit more there we go now going into the internals this device is being powered by the newest snapdragon 8 gen 2 it comes in a couple of variants of storage and well just storage i guess so we have uh, 256 gigs of storage with 12 gigs of ram and uh, 512 gigs of storage with 12, 12 gigs of ram 
uh, in both cases uh, the storage will be UFS 4.0 meaning the newest one for Androids uh, meaning also the fastest at the moment and what that translates to is when you're recording your videos on this device uh, as an example at the 8k 30 frames that you can uh, or for instance 4k 30 uh, the read and write and editing of these videos will be faster on the storage side than it will be on for instance like older generation storages it's kind of like going from a hard drive on your computer to a ssd so there we go uh, now flipping over to the back we have our camera setup so the main camera is a 50 megapixel wide sensor f 1.8 then we got a 12 megapixel tele telephoto f 1.6 and then we get a 50 megapixel ultra wide f 2.2 and like i mentioned with these cameras at the back you can record max at 8k 30 frames 4k 30 and 60 frames and obviously 1080p same uh, along with 120 240 and 960 though these were slow motions and at the front we got a 60 megapixel f 2.2 wide sensor for our selfie shooter which can record at 4k and 4k 60 obviously 30 as well and 1080p same thing so there we go now uh, moving on uh, in terms of the battery in here we got a stupendously fast charging speeds for this device uh, though the batteries uh, for this size of this device a little bit on the lower side I would say so here we have only a 4600 milliamp hour battery uh, opposed to like the more commonly seen uh, 5000 for a device this size uh, but that's only like 400 milliamps so it shouldn't make that big of a difference I would argue now in terms of the advertised charging speeds with this uh, provided charger and the obviously the phone right here uh, we are looking at a half of the battery so 50 percent in six minutes 100 percent in 23 that's advertised now the realistic results might be just a little bit longer uh, we can probably add like a minute which um yeah uh, one more minute and you should be over probably 50. Uh, the reason i'm saying this is because i presume most of the times when companies advertise charging speeds they do so with the phone being turned off and when the phone is off obviously it's going to consume a little bit less power meaning you can f uh, charge the battery a little bit faster so that but still one more minute and charging uh, to kind of counter act that that's like nothing so there we go now in terms of uh, peripherals right here uh, and other things that aren't necessarily like seen right off the bat we have under display fingerprint sensor we get our power and volume rockers we got a uh, speaker at the top microphone for our loudspeaker uh, we got absolutely nothing on this side apart from just the antennas but it's not like that's a button or anything we got more of our speaker grills charging port another microphone and our sim tray and i presume this is strictly a sim tray alone so let's just get a glance at it yep that's just a sim so you won't be able to extend the storage further so there we go that's basically all the device um now uh, quickly giving i guess the pros and the cons right here uh, uh, this kind of price range um so let's see um we got a fantastic display right here 160 hertz uh it is more of a bragging right rather than a useful feature at this point 120 is good enough going over that arguably is a just kind of like a just gimmick i would argue now if you can see the difference of like 40 frames that's great I personally cannot uh, to me the display is basically as smooth no matter what you do um, so that's one uh, being an OLED display meaning that means that the black levels here will be fantastic so that's another positive right here the display quality will also be great uh, the phone has a fairly uh, or fairly has a really nice uh, clean look minimalistic super small bezels look really nice uh, another thing is the included charger that charger is just great like 125 watts for a charger is just so good and obviously it's a flagship so we're getting like the latest of everything 
and now when it comes down to the downsides uh, I would probably argue that the battery size could be a little bit uh, bigger obviously the biggest the the downside is the uh, the price tag being at over twelve freaking hundred dollars uh, so at this price range it's competing with the Samsung Galaxy Note or not Note sorry Notes don't exist uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra which comes with a pen it's a little bit bigger in terms of the display so if that is something that you look for obviously that will have it uh, I'm, I, I probably would presume that cameras will be better on Samsung usually they are at the top of the charts in terms of DSO marks so I doubt this phone will punch above Samsung while having the same ludicrous price tag of Samsung. So that's one thing. Now the, I guess, benefit of going for this over the Samsung is that you have a absolutely stock version of Android. Though you have garbage apps that you can't get rid of. Nope, you can. So yeah, you can even get rid of some of the apps, unlike Samsung, which uh, their partnership with like whatever the heck they have it right now with, won't allow you to remove shitty apps from the phone. Here you actually can so there we go uh, now the question is will the stock android and just a little bit more freedom over your device be uh, the selling port uh, point for you to pay more for an inferior device that is that's gonna really depend on you and what you look for i personally would probably be going for samsung strictly because of the cameras and the stylus that you have the, the hidden uh, s pen that you can use for your device and uh, also uh, just a little bit better looking display uh, looking not running because this one has 160 hertz compared to the 120 that the galaxy s23 ultra has so yeah that being said the phones have both of them as a comparison have some drawbacks uh to them this one seems like it gives you decent options but decent options that should be included in the box maybe not as good as they are uh for about 900 bucks i would argue so if this phone is at like 900 bucks with what do we get right here so case uh, the outstanding charger i want to stress that that charger is great um i wouldn't even mind having like half of the charging speed right here and i still would be satisfied but yeah at 900 bucks this phone would be a great buy at 12 and a half uh, as it stands uh not so much so there we go now with this being said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.